I was washing my hands in the kitchen. Everything seemed normal at first. I turned on a faucet and, as expected, water came out. The faucet was made from a very shiny metal, reflecting the entire room. As I washed my hands, I looked at the reflection in the faucet and suddenly realized something very important was missing myself. I panicked, thinking I was going crazy, but I had a hunch about what was going on. So I counted my fingers. Six. My suspicions were confirmed, but I couldn't believe it. I looked at a microwave clock, and surely enough, the numbers seemed normal, but they just made no sense. Everything pointed to one explanation, but I just couldn't believe it. It felt too real to be a dream. Every time you open your eyes, what you see, feel, and hear happens entirely within your own skull. Think about it. How can a bunch of electrical signals in your brain feel just as real as the world around you? It turns out that much like optical illusions, psychedelic experiences, or schizophrenic episodes, our everyday perceptions are controlled hallucinations. It might sound weird, but modern neuroscience strongly supports this idea. If this theory is as correct as we think it is, it has massive implications for our understanding of hallucinations psychology, and even the nature of our own existence. We all intuitively think that what we see is a direct projection of reality. It all seems pretty straightforward. Your eyes take an image of the world around you, that you then see and interpret directly within your brain. And that is how you see the world, right? Modern science predicts that it actually goes the other way around. It says that the world as we see it is not at all a projection of reality, but actually a projection of our own minds, a controlled hallucination that is only steered by the real world whenever it goes off course. This claim is backed up by a new model in neuroscience that has recently been gaining more and more traction, although its underlying principles have been around since the Middle Ages. Essentially, this model suggests that our brain functions as a prediction machine, constantly generating expectations about what it will perceive based on past experiences and current context. These these predictions include everything you sense, like shapes, sounds, and smells. When these predictions align with the sensory input from the environment, your brain assumes its predictions are correct and it continues working with them. For instance, if you're walking in a forest and you see a tree-shaped object, your brain quickly matches the sensory input with its internal predictions based on past experiences of seeing trees, and you perceive it as a tree without conscious effort and move on. However, when a prediction doesn't line up with the sensory input, this is known as a prediction error. Prediction errors occur when something unexpected happens, such as hearing a loud noise in a quiet room or seeing an object that doesn't fit with your previous experiences, like a blue tree. More specifically, the brain is considered to be a hierarchical prediction machine. This means that there are levels of processing. Higher layers try to predict bigger picture causes of the sensory input coming from lower layers. These are called the top-down predictions. So neurons at higher levels encode predictions about the upcoming signal, which is continually compared with the signal received from lower levels, which are called the bottom-up signals. The information in these top-down predictions and bottom-up signals could then lead to an agreement if our senses agree with the prediction, or a prediction error when they don't agree. And this can happen in any of the layers of the hierarchy. The brain then uses these prediction errors to update its internal model of the world through a process called prediction error minimization, or PEM. It's a bit like a feedback loop. The brain makes a prediction, receives sensory input, and if there's a mismatch, it adjusts its model to better align with reality. So in a way, prediction errors are whatever is left unexplained by our best predictions. This way, our brain gets more accurate and more efficient over time. If you don't fully understand the details, don't worry. The fundamentals will become clearer throughout the rest of the video. But let's go through an example to clear things up first. Let's say you're walking in a forest. From a top-down perspective, you're aware that you're walking in a forest. So you're predicting to see a tree. And so you would predict to see a green brown tree-shaped object. But your eyes don't just accurately capture an image like your camera does. No, you see two separate images, each with a big blind spot where your eye attaches to your optic nerve. Both of these images would also be flipped, and there are also some visible blood vessels, so your brain expects something similar to this, even though you might see something closer to the original in your head. Now, if this is the input your brain gets, then you're not surprised at all. But if one of the trees was blue, then somewhere along this chain, the bottom-up sensations from your eyes would cause a prediction error. This error would then be used to update your internal model of the world, so that next time, you wouldn't be as surprised to see a blue tree in the forest, and you would just dismiss it as a blue tree, saving you time and energy. You might already recognize this idea of using prediction to minimize information from video compression, because it works in a very similar way. When you watch a video online, not every single pixel is transmitted over the internet. Instead, large portions of the image that remain static from one frame to the next are sent only once. The video player then updates only the parts of the
the image that change, so it doesn't have to take in all the raw data from the video whenever there's a new frame, but only the data that it couldn't have predicted based on a footage before it. Now, it turns out that our brains use a very similar principle to be more energy efficient, by only analyzing sensory information that isn't already obvious to us. And from an evolutionary perspective, this efficiency is all that matters, so this model of our brains isn't just backed by scientific evidence, but there's also a very solid reason behind it based in evolution theory. According to Hoffman, our brains haven't evolved to present us with an accurate depiction of reality. They only provide us a user-friendly interface that's optimized for survival and reproduction. A great example of this is the Australian Australian jewel beetle, which evolved to identify mates by recognizing the shiny dimple texture of female beetles. Throughout history, if a male beetle wanted to reproduce, the only thing he had to understand was if something was shiny, dimply and brown. But clearly, this isn't perfect, because it turned out that the males were in love with the Australian beer bottles, because they were shiny, dimply and brown. The beetles were so in love that Australia had to change its bottles to save them from going extinct. It always seemed like the beetles saw reality for what it was, but the the beer bottle showed that they only ever understood the bare minimum to thrive. Its internal representation wasn't able to distinguish between beer bottles and females, so its tiny, overly optimized nervous system wasn't equipped with the tools to see reality for what it was. Of course, we can spot the difference between a beer bottle and a female beetle, but just like the beetle, our brains haven't evolved to prioritize understanding objective reality either. The real world is overwhelmingly complex, so we have to make a compromise and make assumptions that aren't completely accurate. Just like computer icons hide the complex code underlying our machines, our perceptions present simplified versions of reality that help us navigate the world. Physical objects and time are like desktop icons, they're simplifications. They don't accurately represent the underlying complexity of our world, but they're useful for our purposes. And because we never really see objective reality, our senses can be easily manipulated and we can even start to see things Things that aren't real. There are some great examples, like the blind spot illusion, the rubber hand illusion, the disturbing Gansfeld experiment, and magic mushrooms. Take the blind spot illusion for example. If you cover your left eye and look at the black dot, you'll find that if you move your head towards or away from the screen, that the star will suddenly disappear because it perfectly lines up with where your optic nerve attaches to your eye. You could get the same effect by covering your right eye and looking at the star instead of the dot. Another great example is the rubber hand illusion, where participants see rubber hand being stroked in sync with their own hidden hand. This seems to be enough for your brain to assume that the rubber hand is your own. So when the rubber hand is suddenly hit with a hammer, you can feel the impact, even though the rubber hand has no physical connection to your body. Your brain essentially predicts that the impact will hurt, so you feel pain even before it could actually actually reach your brain. A disturbing and more revealing example is the Gansfeld experiment, where participants are seated in a comfortable chair in a soundproof room. They wear headphones, playing white noise and half ping pong balls over their eyes with a red light source in front of them, so that they only see diffused red light and only hear nothing but noise. This setup creates a state of sensory deprivation, so nothing you see or hear has any connection to the real world anymore, leading to uncontrolled perceptions that are detached from reality, or in other words, hallucinations. There are also more direct, less legal ways to induce hallucinations. Take magic mushrooms for example. These mushrooms contain a compound called psilocybin, which gets turned into the active molecule psilocin in the body. This molecule then travels through your blood to the brain, where it passes the blood-brain barrier and binds to special serotonin receptors which causes the whole balance between top-down predictions and bottom-up senses to go out of balance. This is possible because bottom-up connections are primarily handled by AMPA receptors, while top-down connections are primarily handled by slower NMDA receptors. The AMPA receptors, or the bottom-up receptors, are affected by serotonin, and the serotonin receptors are affected by magic mushrooms. So, the main thing to take away from all this is that magic mushrooms can down-regulate your bottom-up network, causing your top-down network to become dominant. This can lead your brain to making predictions way too easily, causing you to see patterns where there are none. A good example of this is Google Deep Dream. This was a computer vision program published in 2015 that was able to find and enhance patterns in images using a neural network, which is essentially what your top-down network does to what you see. Because this neural network was trained on mostly dog images, it hallucinates dogs on everything that could even remotely resemble a dog, which leads to these really trippy videos that look a lot like a psychedelic trip. 
However, a real psychedelic trip is far more complex and immersive. During such an experience, your brain inserts all your prior expectations about the world, not just one specific pattern like dogs. This means you might see, hear, feel, and even smell patterns and connections that you couldn't have perceived before. Colors might seem more vivid, sounds could take on a visual quality, and ordinary objects might appear to breathe or shift. This happens because the usual filters and constraints your brain uses to process sensory information are loosened, allowing for a flood of unfiltered perceptions. Of course, this theory can predict everything, it has its limitations. But if predictive processing is as accurate as we think it is, that means that everything you see, feel, hear, touch and taste all comes from within your pitch black silent skull. So everything we perceive is a persistent illusion that only represents reality, and that's only kept in check by our constant sensory input. So in a very strange way, reality as we know it is just a controlled hallucination.